Okay, I'm back. Um, this video, the, the reason I'm making the video is to try to explain how those big um, rocket mass heaters work with the big heat sink and the cob bench and all that good stuff. Um, because if you look at it all in one big drawing, it can get a little confusing. But you can, but the best way to think about it is to uh, separate the big barrel and all that and the heat sink, separate that from the actual rocket stove. Because the heart of the system is basically the regular old J-tube, highly insulated rocket stove, just like this. Now, um, to recap, what we've got is... Um, We've got an insulated J-tube um, with probably surrounded by vermiculite or some other kind of insulating material. Generally, it's made of fire brick, and then on the outside of the fire brick, you've got like some kind of insulation. Then you've got wood going down into the J-tube, and then they start a small fire, then throw the big wood in there, and. Um, Basically, it burns from the bottom, pulling air down, and then, of course, the heat stays really hot in here because it, there's no place for it to go because it's insulated and it's in a confined area. And then it hits this J-tube, and when it goes around the corner here, it starts to spin, right? And then it uh, hits this wall and also spins. I think it spins the other way, though. But anyway, you got this big turbulent mass at super high temperature, and it causes uh, things like carbon particles and whatnot to actually be burned, whereas normally they would just be deposited as ash, or they would go up your flue and end up descending upon your neighborhood as sort of an ash layer and dust. Well, anyway, um, and of course people would breathe it, and it's bad for you to breathe that stuff, so... Uh, that's one of the reasons why we, uh, why it's mandated that we put like catalytic converters and soot filters on trucks and buses and whatnot these days. Adding a lot to the expense of the bus, may I say. <laughs> but anyway, here we have the rocket mass, um, the rocket stove. So what they do to convert the rocket stove into a rocket mass heater is they uh, take a barrel, like a just a regular old metal barrel, and they either sand off the paint or burn um, a fire in the barrel to uh, heat it up really hot and burn the paint off. And then they just set this barrel. Oh, oh, before I go to that point, maybe I should clarify one thing. Okay. You know, if you have a chimney, like people think that in order to get... Uh, smoke out of a house or out of a fire in a uh, in a stove or a fireplace you need a big long chimney for the air to be sucked up and out of the house right but that's not necessarily true you see um, fires that are in a chimney or from a fireplace they're generally the the smoke and the ash and everything I mean the exhaust is not as hot as it is in a in a regular old rocket stove like this. So what you have is a long um, a long chimney to the roof and then it vents, right? And that long chimney uh, is necessary because it has to rise up and draw the fire or the smoke out. If it's a short thing that just sticks out the wall or something, uh, it wouldn't draw and then you would have uh, smoke inside your house. Well, anyway, um, if you have hotter temperatures like you have here um, in this really short chimney, um, basically the hotter the gases are, the lighter they are because they've expanded a lot. And uh, there's really less of less molecules per cubic foot, so they're vastly lighter, like maybe one-tenth of the normal weight over here. So, um, so basically, it's just it just sucks it out. It, I know that's an illusion, but what happens is the ambient air pressure pushes down here, and then it's very much lighter here, so it just rises up and just flows right through. 
Now, if you have a um, a chimney like this of say that's like a thousand degrees, um, it will rise just as well as a um, as a uh, chimney that is ten times longer but only has one tenth of the temperature, right? So for example, like 200 or 100 degrees, right? Um, or no, that's a bad example. Let's call it 200 degrees and a, and a, say a five or six foot chimney, right? You would have a significant amount of draw. But if you had a thousand degrees um, and only a one foot chimney, you'd be getting the same amount of draw roughly because uh, because the temperature is so much hotter and the, the gases are so much lighter coming out of the rocket stove. So that's why they really don't need a long chimney with a rocket stove. Now let me continue uh, to explain how the rocket mass heater uh, is, a, or the mass heater section is attached to the rocket stove. Because there's limited functionality with this. I mean, you can cook on it by sticking a pot on top of it or something, but there's really not a, a lot you can do otherwise with this uh, with this type of stove. But imagine if you take a barrel, right, and you you have some blocks or so that support the barrel a little bit off of the stove, right? You have blocks here supported by maybe bricks well anyway then you take a barrel and you make sure that this is high enough right and then you you have about an inch or so or an inch and a half uh, between the top of the uh, J-tube and the barrel and then you just set the barrel down over it like so And that is the first part of the mass heater. What happens is the rocket stove blasts the uh, rocket exhaust and it hits the barrel and it heats it up really hot and that acts as a radiant heater for quick uh, heating of your house, right? And you could then vent it out of an exhaust system, right? You Basically you have another pipe coming out of it like so and uh, and that basically once the once the exhaust comes up hits this right and then as soon as it hits this it immediately becomes vastly cooler than it is inside the uh, inside here and then it contracts re really quick um, on in this section right here and then since it's so much heavier here than it is here it actually pulls down it's heavier so its weight pulls down and it pulls so basically the heat is coming up here and it's really blasting out and then it cools down dramatically here and then this uh, cooler gases these cooler gases fall down so the result is this is almost like a pump because because of the way it's constructed. Hot air rises, cool air falls. And um, so that is pretty much all the draw you need in the system. You don't need to have any kind of big, huge, tall chimney because your chimney is under the barrel right here. Now, they could vent the gases right here, but they don't usually. Uh, because the gases are pretty hot still, even after going through the barrel, four or five, six hundred degrees probably. And then, so instead, what they do is they take the, take the uh, like black stove pipe or something, and they run it next to it like so, and then they loop it back and forth once or twice. This is horizontal, I sh I should say. Oh, sorry about my artistry. Well, anyway, this is an S-shaped uh, uh, pipe, which is on uh, on ground level or really close to it, and they basically cover that with a with a mixture of uh, rubble and uh, gravel and old bricks uh, 
and then they coat the entire thing with a so mixture of cob and that's like gra I mean like straw and mud all mixed together and then they trowel it together and uh, and then they make a big bench out of it right and then they like spray the top the really fine mixture on the surface with uh, with some kind of oil and then it turns it into some kind of polymer if I understand correctly and that causes it to not rub off when you like sit on it or something well anyway then after it goes through this big thermal mass heating this whole thermal mass up then you can then the the gases coming out of the thermal mass are probably only like 150 to 200 degrees and at that point you can just run it out the wall through a dryer vent <laughs> if you wanted to uh, or you could plug it into a chimney if you have one handy and it'll just go up the chimney and uh, that is the Cobb uh, the uh, rocket stove mass heater system so basically you have quick heat here you use smaller diameter wood mostly like scrap wood that most people wouldn't even bother trying to to burn then the heat comes up and it heats this barrel so you get immediate heat and uh, to take the chill off your place right away and then you heat five or a couple thousand pounds of uh, thermal mass and then it's vented and then like after if you burn it for several hours then the next you go to sleep and then the next day um, this thermal mass is still heating your place and it keeps the chill off of your your place when you are even before you start a new fire now I kind of was concerned that there would be a problem with venting and pulling air through even when you are uh, even when the fire isn't going because of the heat in the th system right but I don't, don't believe it'll do that because shortly after the uh, fire burns out this area will cool down rather dramatically pretty quick uh, and then at that point the temperature inside the chimney and inside the barrel will be more or less the same so the amount of the amount of draw going through will decrease dramatically and your thermal mass can still be pretty hot and uh, that would prevent it from uh, from pumping warm air out of your house throughout the night and if you uh, wanted to if you were still awake once the fire burned down you looked in there and it's out you could take a cover or something and shove it over there then the whole thing would probably stay a little bit warmer so this is my uh, take on the uh, rocket mass heater system and if I've missed any details or uh, or I am I've got something glaringly incorrect uh, go ahead and uh, give me a, a little input and I would certainly love to hear it later